I then embarked on the examination of our systems of death certification and coroner's investigations. I found that every time a patient died, Shipman always signed the death certificate himself, thereby avoiding uh, the need for any referral to the coroner. He simply bypassed the coroner's system altogether. Where the body was going to be cremated, and the cremation certificate had to be countersigned by another doctor, he just spun a plausible account of the death uh, to that other doctor and obtained the signature. I discovered that it was common practice for the second doctor not to make any inquiries about the death of his own, but to accept the account given by the treating doctor, so long as it appeared, appeared plausible. I also discovered that the medical referee, an official who's supposed to scrutinize all these certificates, did only an administrative job, in most cases merely ensuring that the forms had been completed. It mattered not how. In short, the systems were not working at all. And my third report, which I published in July 2003, made recommendations for the reform of our systems of death and cremation certification and of coroner's practice. I was not the first toiler in this field. In the 1970s, the Broderick Committee, of which you will never have heard, but it did a very good job, it had covered much the same ground and had uh, made some very good recommendations. Unfortunately, its recommendations had been put in the too difficult drawer. And even while I was working uh, on this subject, the Home Office, a Home Office review panel, chaired by a man called Tom Luce, was covering similar, although not identical, ground. Our conclusions, which were reached by very different methodologies, were remarkably similar. You might have thought that that would have given our recommendations greater clout, but that was not so. Our recommendations were greeted with apparent approval and apparent gratitude, but positive proposals were very slow to emerge. I had a number of meetings with David Blunkett, who was then the Home Secretary, and who at that time was taking the lead on these issues, and eventually I made some headway with him. He produced a position paper which went quite a long way towards the loose Smith wish list. But then he had to resign, and the position paper was abandoned. And it's interesting to reflect on the unforeseen consequences of an ill-advised affair. <laughs> the next time anyone in government thought about these issues, which was two or three years later, responsibility had been transferred to the Department of Constitutional Affairs. Lord Falconer was in charge. A statement was made in the House uh, about the proposals which were to be put forward but they failed to achieve any of the main loose Smith objectives. In the end, they ple pleased no one, and the government had to go back to the drawing board. The next attempt resulted in the Coroners and Justice Bill, which was eventually passed on to the statute book in 2009. That went some way towards meeting the loose Smith recommendations, uh, albeit in a somewhat diluted form. But alas, alack, the Act itself is not capable of implementation without the preparation of secondary legislation. That was not achieved before the general election and the change of government. It now appears, from the vibes that I am getting at the moment, that largely for financial reasons, the Act may never be implemented at all. So was that part of the inquiry worthwhile? With great regret, I have to say. I say it with great regret because a huge amount of effort has gone into these issues. They've been on the table for now 40 years. I don't think it will have been worthwhile. Was the subject matter suitable for a public inquiry? I have to admit that I think not. I think Tom Luce's review was probably a cheaper and more effective method of examining the shortcomings of those systems. The advantages of the public inquiry are that if the public really wants to follow the arguments, it can do so. But in practice, it very quickly loses interest. 
There are these disadvantages. One is that of the public inquiry. One is that the approach to any systems examination, and I suspect that this is true of, of Lord Bouchard's inquiry, um, the investigation is inevitably skewed to the subject matter of the inquiry. In my case, the shortcomings of death certification were examined through the lens of what Chipman did and what he managed to get away with. And although I strove to reduce the effect of that by seeking to devise a system which would work well for society as a whole, those who didn't like my proposals could easily say, and they did, that there's, there was no need for such radical reform just because of one rogue doctor. They couldn't say that about Tom Luce's proposals because they had been conceived following a general examination of the way in which the systems had been working. So I think his was better than mine in that respect.